Okay, so today I'm presenting date life. This is an outcome of Palotastic, and it's not interspecies speed dating. This will date species quickly, we hope. Um, it's a collaborative work with these eight authors. Okay. <coughs> so what's the goal? We're trying to, what are we trying to achieve with this? Well, there are many questions for which you need a tree with branch lengths that are proportional to something. Number of generations or time, right? When did angiosperms evolve? How rapidly did bird, do, do birds speciate? Did the origin of snail feeding spur faster, evolution, faster rates of evolution of jaws? Is brain size correlated with body size? How much history will we lose if a certain group of organisms goes extinct? Okay. Probably should need a tree with branch lengths that makes sense. Um, oh, sorry. Yes. And <coughs> so the way you do this, you have a tree that can have branch lengths proportional to the amount of character change or just sort of you know, no branch lengths. And then you clock it in some way using one of these programs. And you get back an ultrametric tree with branch lengths proportional to time. So you can say, OK, these things diverged. you know. Half a million, uh, you know, 0.05 million years ago, or something like that. Okay, these approaches are very popular in biology. So here's these are the most commonly used programs, and their growth and citations over time. Okay, so very useful for biologists. How do you actually do this? What you often need to do is use some sort of calibration. Okay, so you might put, you know, fossil data here. You might say, oh, these couldn't have existed before, you know, until after these continents split. We don't find them over there. Um, you can use other information, and you can use either a fixed calibration, you can use a max age or a min age, or you can use some sort of distribution if you're doing a Bayesian approach. Okay. So the best way to do this is clearly to go and get well-referenced fossils, talk to a paleontologist who knows what she or he is doing, and put them on the tree. Okay. And there's actually a protocol just published in the SysBio this year about how to do this well. Okay. What we'll do in practice. Well, given a phylogram, so a tree with branch is proportional to something other than time, People can use, also use multiple fossils or other data to get calibrations. They can just make up the branch lengths. Say, I'll make all branch lengths equal to one. I'll use something called graph and branch lengths. Okay? This is actually used quite commonly, especially for people who aren't you know, phylogeneticists by trade, people who are actually using trees to answer some other interesting questions, ecologists, people looking at population genetics, that sort of thing. Okay? Or you can use dates from an existing tree. Okay? And one hope with that is the person who did the dates is someone who is really dedicated to getting the, the dates properly, properly estimated. And so we'll have gone through the, the effort of getting calibrations. The downside of that, of course, is that you're just relying on someone else's data rather than going out and checking it yourself. Okay? But it's still probably better than staying here. So you're going to get better if we able to go from here to here. Science as a whole will improve. Those of you who know the field might say, well, isn't there something to do this already? Well, sort of. There's a thing called time tree. And time tree is very nice. You can enter two taxon names, and press return, and they'll give you back a distribution of point estimates of the age of the, of the, age of the split of those taxa from existing data. Okay? And you can also use it on your iPhone if you want. You can buy a poster, you can put it on your iPad. So there are many ways to get at it. It seems very good. The problem is that it's very locked down. Okay? So it has these copyright warnings. You're not allowed to data mine. Um, if you ask them whether you can for your project, they will politely, but consistently say no. Okay. Can you download it? No. Can Google look at it? No. Okay. So while it's very inspirational to us, for the phylogenetics community, once it was on a large scale, there really isn't an available resource. Okay. So inspired by this, we went on to make our own. Okay. So this is what we came up with uh, last month, called Date Life. What you're going to see here is I'm going to type in three taxon names. I'm going to go and query across uh, 4,000 trees with six, a total of 6,000 taxa, a um, total of 600,000 leaves in total across all these trees, and give us back the age of the most, most recent common ancestors across all those trees. Okay, so this is over my slow, ho hotel, ho uh, slow hotel connection, too. So here we go. I'm actually pasting because I can't type properly. Okay. And boom. So it's very fast. Okay. And <coughs> You see some of the nice features of the of the output, right? So for you know for each of these studies that has the taxa that match, we get a median estimate of the age. Because some of these some of these studies have multiple trees. It's like a Bayesian study, or say that has a maximum age and a minimum age and a median age. So you can you can get the average across all of those. Within a study, you tell something you can find something about the distribution. So on a single point estimate, you can say well across the, across all the trees in that data set, 
you know, here's a credible interval, here's a median, here's the absolute max, absolute min. Okay, how many trees are there in that data set? If there are problems, it can warn you about some of the problems. Of course, there might be other problems you don't know about, but this can, this can give you a heads up. So in this case, for example, I gave you three taxa. And so in these two trees, only two of the taxa matched. Okay? And if the, th if the three taxa were human, chimpanzee, and a nolus, and I'm missing chimpanzee, I'm probably okay with the age. But if I were missing a nolus, and just said human and chimpanzee, my age would be an underestimate. So it gives a warning about the possible underestimate. Okay. It also gives a new extreme back. It has just a subtree of what you're looking at in the median ages. And that's if you want an HTML output. What if you want some other sort of output? Okay, well, we can do that too. So we have all these different output formats. We can take a newic tree. And here we just give you simply back a newic tree. Okay, so if you're writing an R script or even a Python script, you can write a little you know, curl command to pull down the newic string that has your calibrated tree for that you're sort of interested in taxa. Okay. The API is just a very basic RESTful API. Okay where you can specify the taxa you want, what format you want back, whether you want trees that have problems to, to give you information, like those, those trees that have missing taxa, where you would throw that out. Um, use embargoed data. So some of the people who are developing this have large trees that aren't quite out yet, and so you can either use those trees as well, or you can only limit it to peer review trees only. And then trees that don't have, that have a single, sorry, that have a single tree, what are you gonna do with that uncertainty? They're not probably uncertain, just, you don't know what the uncertainty is. So you can estimate that as 100% of the age. You can set a, set a different limit for that if you want to. Okay. So with this out, this, these settings, this is the output. And with this setting, this is the output. And what is the string of numbers? Well, it's just the median estimate across studies and then your 95% interval across the studies. Okay. So that way in your program, if you're dating in some other package, you can include that information. Okay. So how do you actually do this? We well, take a study that has some trees. So this been into Edmund's super tree, so mammal super tree is very famous, right? And so you have this looks like there are three trees. Okay, for each of the trees, we make basically half of a purchase distance matrix, right? The age of the most, most recent common ancestor of each pair of taxa. Okay, I'm only showing three taxa here, but I'm, I'm omitting all these other cells. Okay, this is actually a 4,000 by 4,000 cell matrix. Okay, and that's just for one tree. And we can do that for each of the trees in that study. And then you stack it up into a three-dimensional array. Okay. Why bother doing this? Well, the advantage is that when you want to go and just select two of the species, say rhinoceros and horse, it's very easy to subset an array like this. So you don't have to do a tree traversal anymore to find out the age of your most recent common ancestor. All you have to do is just subset a matrix. Just give me row one and row five and column one and column five. Boom. You're done. You get this for all the trees in the data set. Okay. And of course, you have multiple data sets. <coughs> so the Emmons data set had three trees. Tracy Heath's data set had actually a thousand trees. Okay, I'm showing a subset of those here. And so you can qu very quickly get the data from this data set and the data from this data set and get the median and the distribution like we showed you in the HTML. Okay, on the back end, how do we do this? Well, the pretty front end is PHP with a free web template I used. The middle end, what happens when you press send, goes into R, okay? R doesn't have to be slow. There's actually a very nice implementation of R that runs as a daemon, okay? Daemon is something that just runs on your computer and keeps going all the time, right? So in this case, we start the daemon running, and it loads all the data into memory right, right away. And so when you make a query for it, you don't have to start an R instance. You don't have to load anything from the disk. It's already ready to go. It's like, get the tree, go. Get the tree, go. And so it's very, very responsive, okay? Which is great. And then finally gives this response back to PHP. Okay. Right now our database has 11 studies in it, uh, about a little over 4,000 trees, about 7,000 taxa, and you know, half, about half, half a million leads. What are the advantages of this? Well, it's a nice way of getting a synthesis of thousands of trees to get date calibrations. Right? People put a lot of work, some people's entire research, research careers is dating trees. And so I can go and use that information for other information about data, okay? We're very open, okay? So you see the next slide, we can get the code, you can get the trees, you can download it, you can you know, make it your own version that has a blue background, 
that's legal. You know, if you helped us, if you want to, you know, fork it and do it on your own, you're allowed to. Okay. Rather than giving you a point estimate, we give you uncertainty on the dates. Okay. You can have, you know, two taxa, five taxa, ten taxa in your query. It has a RESTful API. Okay. And it has multiple outputs. So you saw the newic string, HTML table, raw date, other information. Okay. Some of the deficiencies so far. Right now, you need an exact name match. If you misspell, you know, mus musculus, it's not going to find a match unless it's also misspelled in the source tree. Okay. Right now, we have a small data set, you know, only 600,000 leads. Um, you could risk this game of sort of calibration telephone. How old are our Angie sperms? 120 million years. How do you know? He told me. How do you know? Well, she told me. And so forth. Right? So you could have the pseudo replication in the data set. It might dissuade people from using fossils. Right? The best, the gold standard is going back to you know, real data, looking at museum specimens, putting them on the tree. Okay? This isn't as good as that, but it does scale really well. Whereas going back to museum specimens, it doesn't scale as well. And so if people have been doing that detailed work on the smaller trees, then you make, make your big you know, super tree of life, you can then use their, use their work and reuse. Okay? And there's probably more things we haven't thought about yet. Okay. What are our short-term plans? Incorporate name resolution service. So Filotastic, one of its outputs was this name resolution service where you can give it a, a taxon string, and it'll say, yeah, we'll, we'll check various name databases and give you back what, it, what each name database says the name is. So if you misspell something, you can pick it up. Okay. We're adding more taxa. So we already have in our back end, in our tree store, we've loaded some fungal trees and some plant trees and to push it, off, push it up to the website. Um, Tracy Heath worked on adding Mendeley for citations. So then when you get your tree back, rather than seeing a string, Heath et al., you're able to go and click on a link that you can download bibliographic information in various formats. We're working with a group at Nesson to add fossil data. So once they get their data set ready of well calibrated fossils, um, we'll add those data to the tree, to the, to the data set too. So if you know that we're on the age of angiosperms, it'll say, these five fossils have been validated and are good estimates of the age of angiosperms. Maybe you want to use those. Okay. We're going to add more export options NextML, maybe violin plots for distributions, sort of thing. One exciting work is we're going to take um, some code written by uh, John Eastman called Congruifier, where you can take a tree with branch lengths and it'll match it to an existing tree. So a tree with you know, branch proportional to amount of change, it'll match it to a larger tree that has ages and sort of stretch the tree so, that, so, the, the, so the input tree will now have ages too. It's a direct way of estimating ages of trees. Okay. So if you want to look at it, it should be up now once people crash it. It's called datelife.org. Here's the funding, here's the source code, here's our tree store, which is on R. The feedback, you can email us, and here you can see us developing it over time. Right? And again, we started this on, I think it was June 4th of this year. This has all been done in about a month. And also, there's only one of me, but I use two computers, so that's why I see. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Yeah, and actually for a while, tree, uh, tree base would actually not allow you to submit chronograms. It was always frustrating. Yeah, sorry, the tree, but, now, but now that they fixed that, now it allows that, yeah. So the first question um, was how do we avoid having bad calibrated trees in there? So far what we're doing is putting in trees that we know are good or large standards and talking to community experts and saying, okay, you know, what are the best plant trees? What plant trees do we need to have? We'll include those. But in time, we are going to have this issue of, you know, people up, you know, we want to have more trees and so people have bad trees in there too. Um, we haven't thought about how to deal with that yet. I mean, one thing is you hope that they look like outliers. You'll see that most of the trees look here and this tree has low confidence and is way over here. Um, but, some, but maybe we could use some sort of community annotation or something like that. We haven't gone through that yet. Yeah. Other questions? I mean, we shouldn't be a tree store. I mean, we have, we have tree base, we have 
dryad, for things like that, the dryad docks the tree base. And so we're using our own tree store here because we want to have a way to store only chronograms. And so what we'll do is you submit to where you should submit it, then shoot us an email and say, hey, I have a really good tree. And then we can suck it in and bring it. Yeah, or the tree base location. Yeah. Yep. The current estimate for age of of a right. Oh, so yeah. I mean, we haven't thought about having like an alert system of some sort. Is that what you're asking? Or I might be missing your I might be misunderstanding because I'm standing up. But yeah, right. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, with this, no. But I mean, this is where two features help, though. I mean, first of all, since our tree store is version controlled, you can say, and we, we, we don't report what version it is, but you could report that on the site. So you say, okay, I downloaded the trees of, as of this version. And second of all, you can make it so that you only use peer reviewed trees. So that way, and those tend to change less than trees you're actually working on. Yeah. We should, we should talk later during the break. Yeah. Do we have time for more questions? Or are we? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so far what we're doing is Right, I mean, something we, I mean, so far what we're doing is Trace is going through literature and finding like, you know, paleontologists have told us like, this is a good fossil, we're doing that, and as we're also not using PaleoDB, because the paleontologists we've talked to have said, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty there, don't use that. Um, yeah, so you should be able to see from the distribution of fossil ages, so like age of the industry, you should be seeing a large distribution of what the pollen ages are, things like that, yeah. Okay, great, thank you all.